Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 11.1, the Man Whitley U test, and section 11.2, Wilcoxon's signed ranks test for matched pairs. These are non parametric tests that evaluate the hypothesis that two samples come from the same statistical population. The Man Whitley U test is performed on samples where the data is independent. In this case, we are looking at the height of two samples of periwinkle distinguished by their position on the shore. No periwinkle is measured more than once. The data can be found in Table 11.1. The Wilcoxon Sign Ranks test for match pairs is performed on two samples where the same individual is measured twice under different conditions. In this case, our data concerns self assessed enjoyment of chocolate at two times of the day. Each individual is measured twice, with their self-assessed enjoyment rating of chocolate at 7am included in the data for the first sample, and their rating from 6pm included in data for the second sample. This type of data is said to be matched or paired. This data can be found in Table 11.2. This is the script we are going to be using. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail, or alternatively, you can download it from the Resource Centre. The command functions are in black are all in lowercase and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names and can be changed to suit your data. But you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and uppercase letters. And the data are in red. There are several ways to load data into R. See my screencast Introduction to R for more details. Looking at the first variable you can see that we have used a C operator to load the data into R. So, let's run the test. We'll start with the Man Whitley U test. I'm going to track over to the first line and click to get my cursor at the beginning. You can now run the script line by line by pressing Ctrl R if you are using a Windows or Linux computer or Command Option R if you are using a Mac. As I press Ctrl R, you can see the line that's been run appears in the console window. We're now going to define the variables. I've used the C operator to define the variable. The first one I'm going to define is lower shore, and the second one is the mid shore. My variables are now in the computer memory, so let's run the test. The test is called Wilcox.test. You can see it has given a W value of 62.5 and a P value of 0.2691. So, what is the meaning of the P value? A P value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. So, a p-value of 0.2691 means we cannot reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that there is no difference in median height of periwinkle shells found on the lower and the midshore. Now, let's carry on to do the Wilcoxon sign rank test for matched pairs. Again, I'm going to define my variables using the C operator. Enjoyment rating of eating chocolate at 7am and enjoyment rating of eating chocolate at 6pm. Now, the test is exactly the same format as for the man with the U test, except you will see that I've added an addition paired equals true. This tells the computer that this is paired data and that the first result of enjoyment at 7 a.m., the 2.0, and the first value of enjoyment at 6 p.m., 10.0, was from the same individual. If we run the test, we can see that we get a V value of 4 and a probability value of 0 0.05871. This is slightly above our cutoff of 0 0.05 for a significant result. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's no significant difference between the median chocolate enjoyment rating at 7 p.m. compared to 6 p.m. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.